this time on The Adventures of Tarka. We find that even in paradise, we can't escape our chores. We let all the sail out for a wonderful trip back to our favorite spot in all of Sandblast. And we bump into some old friends who also help us do a bit of lion fishing. The little island gem that we found on our way to mainland Panama has made for an unexpectedly pleasant stop. The anchorage itself is very well protected, and the island is big enough that we can stretch our land-weary legs to pleasant surroundings. Under Tarka's keel, the ocean stirs with life. And, well, maybe it's time to give the hall a scrub, which is never a bad excuse to jump in. And anyway, we wanted to go check out the fringing reef and see what sort of life it had to offer. Though we can't carry dive tanks around with us, we snorkel a lot. With all that sweating and without much fresh water to spare for luxuries like showers, swimming lets us keep ourselves tolerably clean. But being in the water is also a rewarding experience, and we are never disappointed by what the ocean has to offer. Like these upside-down jellyfish that coexist with photosynthetic organisms, which in exchange for a nice home, provide the jellyfish with nutrients, and so the jellyfish don't have much of a sting since they aren't seeking out prey items. On the other hand, these innocent-looking sea stars are very much predators, seeking out various creatures buried in the sand. And of course, there's our favorite, the reef, with all of its diverse species of coral and fish. After a wonderful few days at anchor here, we could no longer procrastinate on our water situation and set out to refill our water tanks from a river source nearby, which we seem to have lost all our footage of. Afterward, we began to make our way to the island of Provenir, where we will check in the Panama and make our presence here official, as it's been almost a month since we checked out of Colombia. But first we stopped and anchored along the way to take advantage of all that water we just picked up. Nushta got to properly clean her camera housing, which requires quite a bit of water and is the main reason we don't use it very often. And of course we did our laundry and really classed up the place with our colorful hanging display. Someone told us they saw a crocodile here recently, so we were a bit on our toes as we explored the island. What are you afraid of? 
crocodiles. Crocodiles. Someone in the dinghy just told us they thought they saw a crocodile where we parked our dinghy, and so now we're a little paranoid. Crocodile! You got birds! <laughs> look in front of me! Look at them! <laughs> Other than a few suspicious looking logs, we didn't see any crocs today. But we did see a good amount of washed up plastic trash. Scenes like these have sadly become so common in our voyage that we usually don't even stop to take special interest anymore and have to instead remind ourselves that filming it is important as we think the world needs to see it too. Moving on from our short stop, we sailed over to the island of Provenir. Provenir has a small airstrip and an immigration office, where we got our paperwork squared away, but we weren't allowed to film that part. We stayed here only long enough to check in and get an episode finished and uploaded while we still had some internet. We also took the opportunity to get a few supplies from a little store on the neighboring island. Otherwise, we weren't huge fans of the worldly anchorage or its regular traffic. So once all sorted, we headed back out in the sandblast to spend some more time at the islands we were just starting to get to know. We first stopped in the Lemon Caves, where we spent a few days either being lazy on the boat or out snorkeling almost the entirety of the encircling reef. Though we really enjoyed our time here, we were actually itching to get back to one of our favorite spots over in the Hollandas Caves and soon decided to press on. The relatively light winds gave us a very rare opportunity to sail with a full mane, and Tarka gave us a very comfortable ride. The sailing was absolutely perfect, and soon we would be back in one of our favorite spots out of anywhere in the Caribbean. Oh, it's really nice in here. Yeah. Oh my god, it feels so good. The top of the water is super warm. Really? Yeah. It's super clear. Anchors in there are really nice. <laughs> the bottom's mostly clean. It's pretty, it's pretty good. Nice. We anchored in almost the same spot as the last time we were here. And we soon swam over to say hello to our neighbors. Our South African friend Mike was still here with his boat, Kilana, and we hope to do some kite surfing with him soon. But more surprising, old friends of ours from an Australian boat named Perception were here as well. Brad and Meg first started their voyage in Africa, and are now here on their way back to Australia. This Let's see that guy you got there. In the dinghy. 
You want to eat it? No. You sure? The next day, we joined Brad and Meg to go check out a nearby reef. Brad has a spear gun, so the hope was that we could get some dinner, too. Unfortunately, we saw quite a few beautiful, but invasive lionfish. The locals don't seem to fish them, as I think they'd much prefer to sell lobster or snapper, so they probably don't even have any local threats. But we can change that. Nushta took Brad's spear gun and shot us some dinner. But now the trick was to get it back to the boat without poking ourselves with one of its venomous barbs. Actually, that part ended up not being too difficult. The filleting, on the other hand, took a bit of improvisation. <laughs> Doesn't have a head on it anymore. Lionfish can be filleted like most other fish, but it's wise to cut off the barbs first, lest you want to end up like me and get yourself poked. What made the filleting a little bit challenging was mostly the fact that our knives just weren't quite sharp enough. But in the end, we ended up with two very nice cuts of yummy lionfish and fried them up in some butter over the stove. <laughs> Served with some rice and veggies, it made for a delicious meal and one fewer lionfish in the Caribbean. Our cooking adventures continued the next day, as we wanted to bake a cake for Meg's birthday. And luckily, we found a tin of butter stored away on the boat that I had picked up all the way back in Grenada. It's packaged in January of 2017. And it says it expired in July of last year, 2018. Um, but it's been sealed. Looks good, actually. It tastes like butter. <laughs> it tastes like butter. I think of all the tin food discoveries I have made since sailing, butter has got to be near the top of that list. Mmm. Protein. Protein. This week on Cooking with Tarka. Doing so. I can eat it with you. Like it? Yeah. Because we still can't get any cooking fuel here, we took the cake batter and our little omni oven to the beach, built a small fire, burnt our paper trash, and baked the cake over the hot coals. Let's look at this cake I made. <laughs> it's a banana cake. I don't know how that's different than banana bread. Yeah, we try to. <laughs> no, we just found some looks that we need. We, uh, we'll come over later, but we baked you a banana cake, kind of, for your birthday. Aww, we, we, I didn't know it was yesterday, so we'll, we'll bring it back. It looks like it turned out okay. We haven't tried it yet. This is our first but, uh, not burnt cake. So. That's what we're doing, is we're baking a cake. Oh, thanks. We well, do it on the <laughs> We'll come over in a bit if you guys are around. And we yeah, take some okay. cake. <laughs> We also introduced our friends to our favorite card game, Dominion. It's a nice game because it stores away compactly, can be played with just two people, and offers a lot of variety just by changing up which cards are out. But more importantly, it gives us an excuse to hang out, share stories, and enjoy a nice cup of coffee with probably one of the best views anywhere.
The next day, our kite surfing friend Mike offered to show us a secret spot on the outer reef, quite far from where we were anchored. So we of course took his much, much faster dinghy. This spot is special as some combination of natural erosion and crashing waves have come to form really cool caverns, which made for some spectacular snorkeling. We have also found our own favorite secret snorkel spots, and close enough that we can take our own dinghy. But frankly, almost everywhere we've swam in Sand Blast has been a rewarding experience. So for every special spot or perfect reef that we find, there are probably a dozen more just around the corner. We are certainly spoiled here, but I don't think we've taken it for granted at all. And we're definitely grateful to now have friends to share this paradise with. We actually think we'll buddy boat with Perception for a while. Tarka hasn't had a buddy boat since leaving Tanagra and Grenada and King of Bongo back in Martinique, so I think it's high time that she gets a friend of her own. And so, together, with only a bit of a breeze behind us, we set out to go explore more of San Blas. And with this sail, a wonderful friendship of our two boats and their crews has just begun. But more on that next time. Thank <laughs> you.